Hello students, in today's video we will discuss physiology and pharmacology of estrogens. Now we will talk about natural and synthetic estrogens, regulation of secretion of estrogen from ovary. Further we will talk about physiological actions of estrogens, mechanism of action, uses and adverse effects of estrogens. Estrogens is a category of uh, steroidal sex hormones responsible for the development and regulation of female reproductive system and secondary sexual characteristics. Now, estrogens are naturally produced in the body from cholesterol and these are also synthesized. So, estrogens can be natural or they can be synthetic. Now, let's first talk about uh, natural estrogens. There are three main natural estrogens produced in the body. Estron designated as E1, estradiol designated as E2 and estriol designated as E3. Now estradiol is the most potent and uh, of all the estrogens and it is produced during the reproductive years of a woman. Now it is synthesized in the graphene follicle. Uh, that is in the ovaries, corpus luteum and the placenta. Its daily secretion is 10 to 100 micrograms depending on the phase of reproductive cycle. Androstenedione is an endogenous weak androgenic steroid and it is a precursor of astron. While testosterone is the principal androgen in the body, and it is a precursor of astradiol. Now, aromatase enzyme converts androstenedione to estron and testosterone to estradiol. Now, this estradiol is rapidly oxidized in the liver to estron and estron is further hydroxylated to estriol. Now, estriol is primarily produced by placenta during pregnancy and the levels of estriol rises to as high as 30 mg per day at term. Estron is produced by the fatty tissues after menopause and its daily secretion is around 2 to 10 microgram per day. Now, uh, all these uh, natural estrogens are rapidly metabolized in the liver and thus they are inactive orally and exhibit a very short duration of action and thus synthetic estrogens have been developed. So synthetic estrogens are of two types steroidal and non-steroidal. Now steroidal estrogens possess a steroid ring in their chemical structure while the non-steroidal estrogens uh, exhibit a non-steroidal chemical structure. Steroidal estrogens are for example ethinyl estradiol then mestrenol and uh, tibolon. Non-steroidal estrogens include drugs like uh, diethylstilbiastrol, hexestrol, dienestrol and these synthetic estrogens are primarily used as uh, contraceptives and for hormone replacement therapy. Now uh, before discussing regulation of uh, secretion of estrogens from ovary. Let's first review in brief one female reproductive cycle or the uh, menstrual cycle. So this is the chart that shows one reproductive cycle. Now look at the figure one. Now it shows ovarian cycle. Now one reproductive cycle is of 28 days starting from day one to day 28. Now as we all know ovary consists of uh, immature follicles and around one follicle uh, develops each month. Now day 1 to day 14 is termed as a follicular phase. Now immature ovarian follicle develops uh, during this period. Now very important to remember that uh, the developing follicle produces estrogen. So estrogen rises during the follicular phase. On day 14 the developed follicle ruptures and the egg is released. This egg is released in the fallopian tube and the process is called as ovulation. Now this ruptured follicle transforms itself into a structure called as a corpus luteum. 
Now this corpus luteum produces large amount of progesterone and comparatively lesser amounts of estrogen. Now if this egg is not fertilized, level of progesterone and estrogen fall and this marks the beginning of a new reproductive cycle. Now look at the figure 4, estrogen which is shown here in the green color, estrogen rises during the follicular phase, developed follicle produces maximum amount of estrogen, now corpus luteum produces uh, comparatively lesser amounts of estrogen and this is depicted as a slight bump in the estrogen level and which peaks around day 21 and again fall if the egg is not fertilized. Now look at the figure 2. Now follicle stimulating hormone which is shown here in the green color that is FSH is essential for the development of uh, ovarian follicle in the ovary while LH that is the luteinizing hormone is primarily responsible for the rupture of the follicle and ovulation. Now look at the figure 3. Now the primary function of estrogen is to proliferate the endometrium. So this uh, figure shows proliferation of endometrium. Endometrium increases in the size. Now this endometrium it is the innermost lining of the uterus. So now let's uh, uh, proceed on to the regulation of secretion of estrogen from the ovaries. Now let's study regulation of uh, estrogen secretion. Now estrogen secretion from ovaries is regulated by hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. Now hypothalamus produces gonadotropin releasing hormone that stimulates anterior pituitary to produce gonadotropins. Uh, namely follicle stimulating hormone that is FSH and luteinizing hormone that is LH. Now both these hormones act on the ovary. Now FSH is primarily responsible for the development and maturation of dominant follicle and developing follicle continuously releases estrogen. Now moderately elevated estrogen inhibits anterior pituitary inhibiting the release of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone but this developing follicle as it is continuously producing estrogen the levels of estrogen rise and therefore high levels of estrogen stimulate anterior pituitary and anterior pituitary triggers rise in follicle stimulating hormone and surge of luteinizing hormone approximately uh, mid-cycle that is approximately on the 14th day of reproductive cycle causing ovulation that is rupture of the graphene follicle and the release of mature egg. Now as discussed earlier this ruptured follicle develops into corpus luteum. Now this corpus luteum produces high levels of progesterone and comparatively low levels of estrogen. Now if this egg is not fertilized then progesterone and estrogen they send negative feed, feedback signal to the hypothalamus and this hypothalamus inhibits the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone and this further reduces the blood levels of estrogen and this marks the beginning of a new reproductive cycle. Now look at this diagram. Now this diagram shows uh, the blood levels of estrogen. Now during day 1. Now during day 1 to day 14 estrogen level rises. Now this estrogen level rises because the estrogen is produced by the developing follicle and the mature follicle produces maximum amount of estrogen. Now at this point the ovulation takes place, the follicle is ruptured, it transforms itself into the uh, corpus luteum. So during the second phase of reproductive cycle there is a slight bump in the estrogen level which peaks around uh, day 21. So during the second half of reproductive cycle, estrogen is produced by the corpus luteum. Now if egg is not fertilized, estrogen level falls. Now let's uh, talk about the physiological actions of uh, estrogen. Now estrogen is essential for pubertal growth of female reproductive organs. Now it is essential for the growth of uterus, fallopian tube, vagina. 
Now, as we all know, endometrium is the innermost lining of uterus. Estrogen stimulates proliferation of uh, endometrium during uh, the pre-ovulatory phase that is before ovulation and release of mature egg from the ovaries. Now, est estrogen also stimulates uh, growth of uh, fallopian tube and vagina. Now, vaginal epithelium becomes thick, stratified and cornified. Now, further, estrogen creates favorable environment for sperm penetration so that fertilization of the egg takes place by inducing rhythmic contractions of fallopian tubes and uterus. And apart from this, estrogen also increases watery alkaline secretion by the cervical glands. Estrogen also sensitizes the uterus to oxytocin at term, which is essential for the childbirth. Now, estrogen is uh, required for pubertal growth of uh, secondary sexual characters. Now, it produces a growth of breast by mediating proliferation of ducts, stroma and accumulation of fat. It also induces appearance of pubic and axillary hair. And apart from this, estrogen mediates uh, deposition of female pattern uh, body fat, uh, like uh, deposition of uh, fat on the uh, on the breast, thighs, etc. And thus, estrogen induces appearance of uh, feminine body contours. And apart from this, estrogen also affects behavior and plays a role in the emotional well-being. And deficiency of estrogen in the postmenopausal woman causes mood swings. Now, uh, talking about uh, metabolic effects of estrogen, estrogen is a uh, is an anabolic hormone. It strengthens the bones. It promotes epiphyseal fusion. That is, it stops increase in the bone length. And therefore, if it is given to children, it can cause uh, or it can prevent increase in the height. And the estrogen maintains bone mass by retarding bone resorption. Uh, that is, it reduces maturation and activity of bone breaking cells called as osteoclasts. Now, estrogen maintains bone mass by increasing the bone matrix proteins like uh, osteocalcin, osteo osteonectin, uh, collagen and alkaline phosphatase. It also promotes positive calcium balance. Now, the effect of estrogens on lipids. Now, estrogens decrease bad cholesterol that is low density lipids. So, estrogen reduces LDL where it, whereas it increases good cholesterol. It increases HDL. Uh, it also increases uh, triglycerides. Now, since estrogen increases good cholesterol and reduces bad cholesterol, it uh, provides protection from atherosclerosis and therefore it uh, protects uh, from the risk of cardiovascular diseases. Now effect of uh, estrogen on blood coagulation. Now estrogen increases uh, coagulation of blood by increasing synthesis of clotting factors like clotting factor 2, 7, 9 and 10. Now clot formed in the blood vessels is called as thrombus and moving or circulating thrombus in a blood vessel is called as emboli. Now, estrogen also increases fibrinolytic activity. That is, it causes increased breakdown of fibrin clot due to reduced plasminogen activator inhibitor 1. And thus, estrogen predisposes to thromboembolism. That is, increased formation of thrombus and increased formation of emboli in the blood vessels. Now further, estrogen uh, promotes vasodilation by increasing synthesis of nitric oxide and prostacyclin that is PGI2. Nitric oxide and prostacyclin are potent vasodilators. Now effect of estrogen on bile, estrogen increases amount of cholesterol relative to bile salts and lecithin in the bile. Now, increased amount of cholesterol causes crystallization of cholesterol and that leads to the formation of gallstones. And formation of gallstones can further cause inflammation of gallbladder 
and that is termed as cholecystitis. Now, estrogen also increases protein synthesis. It induces increased synthesis of thyroxine binding globulin, cortisol binding globulin and sex hormone binding globulin. So, after physiological actions, let us uh, talk about the mechanism of action of estrogen. Now, uh, look at this uh, chart. Uh, it describes the uh, mechanism of action of estrogen. Now, estrogen has two types of receptors, estrogen receptor alpha and estrogen receptor beta. Now, most tissues express both estrogen receptor alpha and beta. Now, estrogen receptor alpha predominate in the uterus, vagina, breast, bone, blood vessels and hypothalamus. While estrogen receptor beta predominates in the ovaries in females and prostate gland in the males. Now look at this diagram, this is the target cell. Now estrogen receptors are found either in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus. Now estrogen binds to the estrogen receptors in the target cells where it has to produce its action and produce their effect by modifying the protein synthesis of that target cell. So estrogens regulate protein synthesis of the target cell and produce their desired biological response. Now as estrogen is a steroid, free estrogen rapidly uh, crosses the cell membrane and it reaches the cytoplasm. Now in the cytoplasm uh, are present estrogen receptors. These estro estrogen receptors are present bound to the inhibitory heat shock protein that is HSP. Uh, designated here in the yellow color. Now estrogen binds to the uh, estrogen receptors and this causes displacement of inhibitory heat shock protein. Now the complex of uh, estrogen and estrogen receptor undergoes dimerization and then this dimerized complex it translocates itself to the nucleus. Now this dimer then interacts with the DNA. Uh, it interacts with the DNA. It interacts with the uh, specific DNA sequence called as estrogen response element uh, depicted here as ERES. Now uh, as soon as the, uh, the complex it interacts with the estrogen response element. It causes activation and expression of the desired target genes. And thus messenger RNA specific to estrogen is produced. And this causes synthesis of specific proteins as desired by the estrogen. And this leads to the production of required biological response as desired by the estrogen. So this is a mechanism by which estrogen produces its physiological effect on a cell. Now let's talk about the uses of estrogen. Now primary use of estrogen is as a hormone replacement therapy in postmenopausal women. Now, in, con in contrast to the women of reproductive age where 10 to 100 microgram of estrogen is produced daily, in postmenopausal women only 2 to 10 microgram of estrogen is produced daily. And the sharp decline in the level of estrogen leads to vasomotor disturbances like hot flushes. Now, a hot flush is a sudden feeling of warmth and usually it's very intense over the face, neck and the chest. And this is because of vasodilation. Now excessive loss of heat might cause chilly sensation. And these episodes of uh, hot flushes are highly disturbing. And they may also produce sleep dis disruption. Now low estrogen can also cause urogenital atrophy that is characterized by vaginal dryness. Then urinary urgency and inflammation of vagina that is vaginitis. Now another problem is a fall in the bone mass leading to osteoporosis and further low levels of estrogen can cause uh, psychological and cognitive disturbances in postmenopausal women like uh, mood swings, depression. Now estrogen alone or estrogen in combination with progesterone 
uh, hormone replacement therapy is highly beneficial and it reduces uh, vasomotor disturbances uh, then urogenital atrophy osteoporosis as well as it, it is found to be beneficial in psychological and cognitive disturbances now even though uh, hormone replacement therapy is highly beneficial for postmenopausal women. It increases the risk of uh, thrombotic coronary artery diseases, myocardial infarction, stroke, uh, etc. Now, second important use of estrogen is uh, as oral contraceptive. Now, estrogen in combination with progesterone uh, is used as oral contraceptive. Now, estrogen inhibits uh, the release of a follicle stimulating hormone preventing development and maturation of graphene follicle while progesterone inhibits the secretion of luteinizing hormone preventing rupture of follicle preventing ovulation and thus uh, it prevents the release of the egg and thus estrogen and progesterone inhibit ovulation and thus combined oral contraceptive pills are very effective and they exhibit efficacy as high as 98 to 99.9% .9 in preventing uh, pregnancy. Now, long acting intramuscular estrogen preparations are highly effective in treating uh, female hypogonadism with inadequate functioning of ovaries. Now, apart from this, estrogen therapy might also be useful in the treatment and management of uh, prostate cancer, acne, amenorrhea and uh, dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Now, clinically used uh, uh, estrogens are estradiol, conjugated estrogens, ethinyl estradiol, quinestrol and uh, estron. Now, these estrogen preparations are available for oral, intramuscular, transdermal and topical administration. Now, let's talk about the adverse effects of estrogen supplementation. Now, uh, talking about the adverse effects, uh, the most uh, common adverse effect is the uh, nausea and vomiting. Now, estrogen supplementation increases uh, coagulation of blood resulting in increased incidences of uh, thromboembolism and increased thromboembolism leads to increased risk of uh, cardiovascular diseases like myocardial infarction, stroke, uh, etc. Now, apart from this, uh, estrogen administration uh, can cause uh, increased incidences of irregular bleeding. Now, as uh, estrogen uh, proliferates endometrium it can cause endometrial carcinoma in uh, postmenopausal women and therefore estrogen supplementation is combined with progesterone as uh, progesterone counteracts proliferative effect of estrogen now estrogen hrt in postmenopausal women is uh, associated with the risk of breast cancer now, as discussed earlier, estrogen increases the amount of cholesterol in uh, bile and this causes uh, crystallization of uh, cholesterol leading to the formation of gallstones. Now, apart from this, supplementation of estrogen can also increase incidences of migraine and epilepsy. Now, a very common non-steroidal synthetic estrogen that is still be astrol given in pregnancy increases the incidences of uh, vaginal and cervical carcinoma in female offsprings. Now, in men, estrogen uh, causes suppression of libido, gynecomastia and feminization. Now, as we have already discussed that uh, estrogen causes fusion of uh, Epiphysis, administration of estrogen to women uh, with hypogonadism can cause reduced height. Now, this, these are the adverse effects. These are the main adverse effects of estrogen. Now, let's uh, talk about the contraindications of estrogens. Now, estrogens should not be supplemented uh, to the patient with a past history of thromboembolism or the breast cancer. Uh, endometrial cancer, liver disease or pregnancy. So this is in brief on physiological and uh, pharmacological aspects of uh, natural and synthetic estrogens. Now if you find the video useful kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.